you understand? And, and, and ones are assuming everything will be fine. They're sitting back glibly. They're getting caught up. They're, they're, they're sinking into the deep sea of, of, of technological bliss. You understand? But the prophecy never allows us that sort of option. Many of the elements of eschatology are deliberately vague or seemingly, especially to a novice or a newcomer, and are often clarified only, only after the prophecy has been fulfilled. But then those who were properly interpreting the prophecy before the actual fulfillment of it, their systems, analysis, procedures, and, and, and other best practices towards a prophetical approach, you understand, prove the merit of using that sort of approach to studying prophecy, you understand. So Christian, uh, Christians, and especially I and I elect Rastafari brothers and sisters, especially should remember that there was once a flourishing gospel witness. There was at one time a flourishing gospel witness in what is now Gaddafi's Libya, Gaddafi's, Gaddafi's Libya. And prior to the rise of Islam in the 7th century AD, there were flourishing black, Jewish, Ethiopian, Hebrew, African churches that flourished in Roman so-called North Africa and, and, and all up and down Eastern Africa as well, and especially in today's Libya. So we should remember, we should remember this and the particular season that we are in as um, Ethiopian Orthodox or as Tawahedo Christianoch is called the Abitom, the Great Lent. And in the Great Lent, during the Great Lent, we fast, of course, it's the lead up to Fasica, but we also remember many of those Christians who were persecuted in past times and many of the martyrs. It seems as though modern Christians forget about the martyrs of this faith because they're not really in the same faith. They've, they've made up something new. You understand? It's like a TV dinner. TV evangelists and, and all the rest of them, they've made up something totally different. But when we study the scriptures and study the Bible and the word of God and truth, we start to b recognize those before us. You understand? Those, what their plight, what their struggles were. You understand? Because there's a common brotherhood, you understand, among true Christians and especially among the true Rastafari for the true Christian people, you understand, and the true Jewish and the Hebrew people. So we need to remember that there was once a flourishing gospel witness in what is now Libya. And Jah's love, Jah has love for the Libyan people, the North African people, and the Arab people, you understand, in particular, because some of them have become enemy combatants in this present time because of a lot of the social and religious Babylon and, and confusion. But Jah's love for the Libyan people in particular has never changed. More than ever, what the Libyan people need now is, 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 is our prayer. You know what I'm saying? Is, is, is our prayer. They need our love. They need our, our support. Perhaps we need to be willing to bear the cross, to bear the cross of Christos, to bear the cross of Christ, even to bear the cross of Christ in his kingly character to them, even as Simeon, Simon, did for Geta Iesus, for Adoni Yehoshua, the Lord Jesus, nearly 2,000 years ago.